What's going on guys? This is Ryan with RK Outpost and as predicted, nearly all the games journalists out there and the access media are defending Naughty Dog and defending The Last of Us Part 2, whether they're talking about, oh, user reviews, they're just bots review bombing things, or whether they're calling fans bigots, homophobes, misogynists, whatever it may be. Nearly all of the access media is on the side of Naughty Dog and Neil Druckmann. However, there is at least one voice out there who I've had a confrontation with before who I think deserves credit through this entire thing, and we're going to talk about it. Now, first, I did just want to take a look uh, before we look at this Forbes article and another Forbes article, ironically, by Paul Tassi and Eric Kane. I wonder who it is that we're going to rip on, and I wonder who it is that we are going to give some credit to. Let's just do a quick update on this Metacritic score, uh, 3.6. Uh, hey guys, the uh, the positive scores are coming back up. Maybe it maybe it'll be saved after all. As we look at 35,000 reviews, you can see that the vast amount of them are negative. There is 10,000 positive reviews, however, and let's just be real: the majority of the negative ones are zero. The majority of the positive ones are 10. Um, a lot of these are just like F Naughty Dog, zero. A lot of these are just like F the Haters, 10. That's how it goes. Review bombing goes both ways. Let's not get it confused. Uh, but like I said, most of the mainstream, the access media, the people who gave this, you know, 10s out of 10s and want to do everything they can to stay in the good graces are saying things like this. The Last of Us Part 2. What's the problem here exactly? And this is Paul Tassi, who has wrote several articles for Forbes over the past couple days, uh, specifically talking about how, oh, well, people are just review bombing it. Um, you know, thing, the, the same thing that we've heard time and time again. Things get review bombed for a reason. Obviously, because people are very upset. They are very unhappy with the product that they have gotten. That's why it happens. It doesn't happen when people love games or when games are great. It only happens when there's a huge problem with the game. And Paul Tassi basically just goes through this as, I've played half the game. I don't understand what these people are talking about. They must either not like the death because they don't understand or because they are, again, against the agenda. They're homophobes. They are bigots in some way, shape, or form. But Eric Kane, Eric Kane, also with Forbes. I made a video uh, almost as a direct response to Eric Kane after him and Paul Tassi came out and said that Forbes was not getting review copies for The Last of Us Part 2. We got into a back and forth on Twitter, um, and I don't apologize for any of that, obviously. We both said what we said. Um, I then made a... Because essentially, I, said, I called him out for not talking about the copyright abuse on my channel, on Geeks and Gamers, on so many others. And Eric Kane said, oh, well, you, I haven't written it up in a second. I don't work for you. You haven't written about me not getting a review copy. So I said, uh, if you bitch, I'll do it. And so I did a video on him not getting a review copy. To his credit, he wrote an article, article about DMCA abuses. And I wanted to take a look because I think he has an incredible, I, I don't want to say incredible, but very nuanced compared to the rest of the access media because I think he brings up some great points. Is one person who's actually saying things that I think makes sense. So I want to give him credit. Two warnings about the last of us two user review scores. Well, it should come as no surprise, critics and gamers disagree wildly on The Last of Us 2, though the reasons are less than clear-cut. Of course, not all critics adored the game. He did write an article about some of the more negative reviews. Again, one of the reasons that I have appreciated what Eric Kane has done in the recent uh, days and weeks. Um, not all gamers hate it. That's too narrow a dichotomy for obvious reasons. In any case, if you're re reading reviews... Or following the discussion, it probably doesn't hurt to have a little more context. And before we do go into this, uh, listen, I am wearing this shirt. This is a fuck Naughty Dog shirt for obvious reasons. Um, if you want yours, you can check out the pinned comment below and rep the F Naughty Dog merch. However, we might talk about spoilers. We will talk about spoilers. So if you don't want to be spoiled, I'd recommend you tune away right now. Warning one, review bombing. As Paul Tassi covered already here on Forbes, there's definitely some degree of review bombing going on here. That's when a bunch of gamers, whether through coordinated action or just common cause, head over to a site like Metacritic or Rotten Tomato express their collective anger by giving really low review scores. In this case, and of course this was written a while ago, um, it was all the way at 3.4. That's not as low as Warcraft 3 Reforge, which was review bombed thanks to a legion of problems within the game and a general antipathy for Blizzard. Of course, a problem with the game. Review and Eric Kane says this 
At the time, I pointed out that review bombing was one of the only realistic tools besides voting with wallets normal consumers have to voice their discontent and anger at a game or game company. And that it doesn't necessarily mean the game is terrible, but an indication that something is wrong. And that is exactly what is going on here. And what is wrong are many things, whether it be the agenda, uh, people have a problem with the agenda, whether it be the fact that it's just characters that got absolutely disrespected and destroyed for no reason, or whether it be a multitude of other things, including the ending. That is what is going on here. Eric Kane is exactly right. But more on this in a minute. For now, warning number one is simply this. User review scores are not currently based on actual reviews. The game was bombed immediately. Within hours, innumerable 0 out of 10 user reviews were posted. They could not have finished the game. Um, watching isn't playing, and I would personally never watch a game but then review it. I do think that a lot of this game, you can tell from watching Twitch streams. Let's just be real. The Last of Us is a story that, first and foremost... People liked The Last of Us. They loved the first game because of the story. Now, the gameplay, how it looked, that's all very important. But the story was first and foremost why people liked this game. It's why they are invested in the second game because of the story. So that's why I think that watching it is a very good, um, gives you a very good feeling of how it is to play it. One and two. Don't listen to the ridiculous backlash against gamers. Thank you, Eric Kane. This is is an absolutely phenomenal take, in my opinion. And he's going to go through some stuff right here that we've talked about, which I think is awesome. Here's a tweet from former Gears of War developer reacting to evil gamers. Uh, you know, the people who have bought his games for years and made him wealthy. Uh, and of course, uh, Ellie is into girls. This is SJW nonsense. F right off with that. Eric Kane retweets him. I says, I really feel like focusing just on this when reacting to negative reactions to The Last of Us 2 is kind of silly. Reminds me of the reaction to people not loving Mass Effect 3, entitled gamers and whatnot. Here we go again. And this is the general reaction he's seen online to people who don't like The Last of Us 2, that they're anti-SJW who hate gay people and want to burn down Naughty Dog for being a den of social justice. Now, okay, there's a glimmer of truth to this. Some people are genuinely homophobic. Like he says, a glimmer, a very small portion of people do feel that way. That's undeniable. Just like an incredibly small portion of people are actually racist, right? But the vast majority of people have different problems with it. Other gamers are reactionary. We, any kind of progressive politics are found, but there's way more than this than meets the eye. And then he talks about uh, how the reaction to Mass Effect 3, it wasn't because of homophobia. It was because there was something wrong with the game. Uh, to dismiss as am entitled or hateful is wrong then and it's wrong now. Um, this tweet where he says, oh, people are upset because it's a girl. Of course, that's not true. And it's not true because he even brings this up. The Last of Us Left Behind, a story which focused on Ellie and revealed her sexuality. Uh, hint, hint, a lesbian. That wasn't review bombed. So guess what? It's not that. As I said, review bombing can be a way to voice discontent, and that's exactly what happened here. Gamers have seen the leaks and are not happy with them. And then again, credit to Eric Kane. YouTubers who discussed the leaks on their channels were given takedown notices by Sony even when they didn't show footage, and gamers are unhappy about that as well. 100%. That's why I was so upset about this to begin with. Yeah, I didn't like the leaks, but guess what? You false copyright struck my channel not once, but twice. You almost terminated my channel. That is another reason why so many people are upset at the actions they have taken all the way along the path. Also, what should we do to the many critics who dislike the game? He has many problems with the game, saying that he appreciated the game's diversity at first, but after a while, it just felt like an equal opportunity for different kinds of people to suffer. Um, so, and then Eric Kane, you know, finishes it up like this. So be it. I think there's truth to be found in all nooks and crannies in an outrage war left scattered in the wake. There's going to be people who genuinely like or dislike it, and that's fine. Nothing is for everyone. I have yet to play Last of Us Part 2 yet. I'll have some thoughts next week. I look forward to playing it because I love the first game, even though it's a game. I hope I love the second. I guess we'll see. Uh, like I said, I don't agree with Eric Kane on everything. Obviously, we got into a big battle on Twitter uh, a month or two ago. But I have to give some respect for the guy for that. In all honesty, I think that that was a great balanced take. Um, I didn't agree with all of what he said. But I think that that, I wish more people had that kind of reaction. Like, 
you know, yeah, sure. Are there some people who genuinely hate playing someone because it's a gay character? Yes, there's a, a very small fraction of people that feel that way. Is there a small fraction of people that feel that way about playing a girl? Yeah, a very small fraction. But when you look at these previous games, you know that that has nothing to do with why it's being review bombed. It's being review bombed the way it is because something is wrong with it. There's something wrong with the story. There's something wrong with the agenda. There's something wrong with the way Naughty Dog has treated people. All of this plays a part. But let me know what you guys think about this in Eric Kane's Forbes article compared to Paul Tassi, who's like, I don't know what's going on. Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you check out the F Naughty Dog merch as well. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell for notifications, share this video out there, and I will talk to you later. Thanks for watching, everyone. And a huge shout out to my patrons. I appreciate you guys so much. Want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram? Check out the description below. You'll find links to my P.O. Box and my Patreon as well. And I'll talk to you guys later.